And now then, Joyce. Seven. Yes. Roger. Seven. Roger, seven. Epistle. Epistle? Ah, that's oh, nice, because this is all about letters, this game. Epistle is nice. Joyce? Impulse. An impulse. Wow. Both good. Very good. Yeah. Epistle and impulse for the seven. Thelma? Um, how about lumpiest? Can we have lumpiest? Yes, an lumpiest. ugly word, but it's an eight, so very good. Lumpiest is there for eight. There's also another seven in temples, but lumpiest wins. Yeah. A lumpiest. Limp oh, no, it's not enough. Yeah. OK, well, we like lumpiest, but we like these two as well. 18 and 25. Now, Mr Roger Audish, Miss Carol Vorderman is waiting for your command. <laughs> uh, your choice, please, Carol. Thank you very much. One from the top, then. Thank goodness for usual. And we have ten and eight, one and nine, six and one hundred, and a target of five hundred and nineteen. Yeah, five hundred and nineteen. Five one nine. Five one nine, then Roger. Five one nine. Good, Joyce. Five one nine. Right, Joyce. Well, you're the newcomer, so here you go. A hundred times five. How do you make the five? Is five hundred? Yes. How do you make the oh, five? Oh, six Joyce? minus one. Sorry, yeah. Carol. It's five hundred. And then nine plus ten. Absolutely right. Add them on. Yes, Roger. It's the same. Six minus one is five. Five times hundred is five hundred plus ten plus nine. Yep. Yeah. It yes. strikes me. Carol, that uh, yes. recently all these chappies coming on this program yes. are giving you an easy time because they're all saying your choice. One from Carol. the top. You were always choice always one, one from, the, from top. the top. So I think people who come on this program the next few days should make things a bit more difficult for, for her. Because the lassie's having it easy and she likes you like a challenge, don't you? To be fair, Carol. I do like a challenge, but I also like, to, like an easy time every now and again. <laughs> don't we all? Okay, well, ten points for all, so that's very nice. Twenty-eight and thirty-five. We hand over to you, Thelma. Well, it's a um, little bit of talk about gardening again. And uh, I've got three poems for you this time, two little ones, and then finally the reward of gardening. But just to explain that um, I think gardening teaches you an awful lot. And some of the things it teaches you, one is patience. You have to wait for the things to grow. And another one is observation. You have to keep a good eye on it. And then there's caring. And if you kept a good eye on it, you'll see if things are, plants are doing well. And if they look a bit sick, well, you have to nurture them a little bit, make sure they're fed well, they're kept warm and looked after. It's also taught me not to be squeamish. And um, now I can crunch off the green fly and I can pick up worms. And I don't mind spiders in the garden. I hate them at home, but I don't mind them <laughs> in the garden. And those of you who are gardeners will actually know that occasionally you have to put up with a few odd smells in the garden, particularly if you like to get a load in manure, as I do. But I, I've decided that's my friend and I'm going to like it. But there was a little poem I wrote oh, some time ago, which is explaining that. I always experienced a whiff of distaste when anyone mentioned animal waste. But since I have gardened, much worse words are pardoned I'd repeat them, but frankly, I'm far too shamefaced. <laughs> <laughs> and then there was one I wrote when I lived in Scotland, when my children were young. And I was trying to teach them that we shouldn't be using all these chemicals on the garden. And uh, I have to say this in a Scottish accent, because that's when I wrote it. <laughs> it's embedded in my head in that way. At the bottom of our garden, beneath a big grey stone, a lot of wiggly woodlice lived. They'd made that place their home. But Daddy came along today and with a puff and squirt of something deadly killed the lot. Now all that's left is dirt. And that's so very true if we keep pouring chemicals on the garden. But finally there's a reward at the end of the day when you're absolutely jiggered and you come in aching in every bone and muscle. And it's this. 
I've worked in the garden since dawn. It's now dusk and there's dozens of things left to do. I've been digging and hoeing and seeding and sowing and planting delphiniums blue. But I've watered the garden now, cleaned up the tools. My nails are all torn, my back's chronic. The answer is simply a lemon, a dimply glass, some ice, and a large gin and tonic. Yes. <laughs> Very good. Well, I bet you're glad you came in from the garden now to watch Countdown. You see, a lot of you have now come in at quarter past four from the garden and you've been treated to this uh, very good uh, first half. Uh, and it hasn't ended yet because we now move on to our tea time teaser, the first one. Heat car is the word we're looking at. Heat car. And uh, the dictic clue is from the neck down. Countdown, sponsored by Kellogg's All Brand. Problem solved. Heat car, not a heat car named Desire, no, a heat car which you get to trachea, trachea from the neck down. From the neck up, of course, you get rather nice little flat ears, of course. <laughs> <laughs> you may have noticed, perhaps, over the years, perhaps. <laughs> over the ears. <laughs> anyway, ear, ear to, uh, to what Thelma said in uh, part one. Here we are now, 28 with Roger and uh, 35 to Joyce. And it's uh, Joyce's choice. Consonant, please, Carol. C. And another, please. G. Another. T. And one more, please. And B. And a vowel. I. And another. A. And another. O. And another. E. And a consonant to finish. And H. OK, thank you. Starting clock. Only five. OK, Roger. Five as well. OK, Roger's five. Bitch. Yep, bitch. Joyce? Bite. B-I-G-H-T. Oh, bite, as in the, yeah. as in the great... Uh, what is it? Some geography. It's a sea. geography term, yes. Bite is a bite. The, the great, great Australian bite. bite. The oh, great yes. Australian bite, yes. <laughs> Not by <a> kangaroo. That is punch Bite and bitch. Yes. yes. Um, well, I don't know if biotech which is an abbreviation, is that accepted? Yeah, if you're a contestant, you'd think that was a really risky one, but it's absolutely there. Biotech is there for seven. And so, funnily enough, is the word ice boat. Oh. Ice boat for seven. One that I wasn't expecting to see, but it's all oh. one word. It's, for, it's got runners and it, a sail and it travels on ice. OK. Right, well, points for all there, so 33 and 40, Roger. Consonant, please, Carol. R. And another. S. And a third. D. And a fourth. K. And a vowel, please. I. And another vowel. E. And another. A. And a consonant. F. And another consonant, please. And N. Right, uh, right. 